like we mentioned in the case of angular acceleration and the predefinition of angular momentum. So taking that further, we'll be discussing about the rotational inertia, how do we get to the concept of rotational inertia. So please be tuned in to understand here in this particular module about rotational inertia. So now we move on to the next topic that is the angular rotation or angular inertia or rotational inertia. What does rotational inertia stand for? So rotational inertia is nothing but it's an analog of the mass of basically in the rotation. Basically it's an analog of mass. Mass exists in the case of linear motion whereas in the case of rotational motion it is replaced by the moment of inertia. Its role is played by the moment of inertia. So rotational inertia obviously is going to depend on the distribution of the mass with respect to the axis of rotation because obviously as the mass distribution varies the, the rotation inertia value is also going to vary as a result. So what will we get as a result? So if I say that I have this kind of distribution, we will now try to assess a couple of distribution. So here this is a very thin ring that I have. In this case, the ring is moving in a circular path. So if I say n is the mass, r is the radius, in that case, the moment of inertia of this ring is in all is going to be equal to mr. Similarly, if I take a test, it's slightly bigger ring, I should say. So in this case as well, the moment of inertia will still be equals to mr square. M is the mass of this particular ring that we had in the previous case. So both of them have the moment of inertia and mass square. Now let's try to understand a couple of typical cases. So let's say this is if I have to rotate this ring. In the previous case, what I had was the pre that was mentioned wherein this ring had was being rotated with respect to an axis that is passing through the center. So instead of this, if I try to rotate this disk or this ring perpendicular to it, so I basically have to use a perpendicular axis theorem to find it out. So in this case, if I am rotating perpendicular to this, so this disk rotates like this. So I will get half a mass square, I should say it should rotate something like this. So the phase itself is moving like this, that gives me half a mass square. If I take the case <coughs> of a cylindrical rod, so this cylindrical rod, if I try to rotate about an axis that is passing through one end of it, I'll get 1 by 3 ml square. So that is going to be the moment of inertia about one of the two ends. In a similar way, if I want to find out the moment of inertia with respect to the center of the same rod, in that case, the moment of inertia is going to be given by 1 by 12 ml square. There, there are different ways to find it out. So what you can do, you can take a small portion of it at some distance from this, and you start integrating that portion, let's say from 0 to minus, uh, let's say from minus L by 2 to plus L by 2. So when you integrate off over that particular distance, that particular mass obviously is going to be kept at some distance x. So <coughs> as a result of it, you can find out the total mass dot as to how the distribution is taking place. Using that, you can find out the value of the moment of inertia. In a similar manner, let's say if I will find out a moment of inertia of this particular cylinder. So this cylinder has a radius r and you are rotating about an axis that is passing through the center of this cylinder. So if I have to do this, I will find that the moment of inertia is going to be equal to half a mass square. So in this case, because of the mass distribution, there is a factor of half a mass square. Hence, basically you start integrating from the case of a disk. So if you have a disk, obviously in that case as well you will get half a mass square. So if you sum up over total length, the total length of the cylinder that is again going to give you half the mass square. Finally, if I take the case of a sphere, so for the case of a sphere, either way, whichever direction you want to um, pass it, obviously it is going to be passing through the center. When it passes through the center, its uh, um, moment of inertia is going to be given by 2 by 5 mass square. Now, that I can give you as a homework, let's say, if you are required to find out the moment of inertia about one of the diameters, about one of the edges of the diameter, not from the center but from one of the edges. In that case, what is going to be the value of the moment of inertia? By figuring it out, you can use the parallel axis theorem to find it out. In case you have any doubts in whatever we have discussed, please feel free to ask your doubts. For that, you need to go to www.askatins.com. In that, you need to click on the discussion board. Once you click on that, you will find an option of Ask Experts. In this, you can select your category out of the categories that we have out here 
and then you can post your question. We experts at Ask IITians will get back to you with the answer within 24 to 48 hours. So here we understood how do we get to the concept of rotational inertia. Rotational inertia is basically the analog of mass. Mass exists in the case of obviously mass does exist in the case of rotation as well but like we are trying to define analogous quantities so the analog of mass in linear motion is substituted in this case by rotational inertia so the rotational inertia as we'll find further in our next topic as well that it depends on the mass as well as it depends on the radius of gyration that is the average radius on about which about the center of mass about which the masses are said to be concentrated so please be tuned in and we'll discuss about the different moment of inertia for different objects in our next part.